2000, the speculation that future President George W. Bush would not be allowed to enter Canada because he'd had a DUI conviction? A sweeter and simpler time. Our third story tonight, fast forward more than eight years and with Mr. Bush due to go to Canada to give his first post-presidential speech tomorrow, the first president elected after earning a rap sheet has probably managed to add a few more crimes in the interim. Conspiracy to torture, kidnapping, aggravated invasion of another country, the charges we know about. So will Canada let him in? If so, would they prosecute him? Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper of the Conservative Party is not commenting. He also has not responded to a Canadian attorney, Gail Davidson, of Lawyers Against the War, who joins us momentarily, and who wrote to the Prime Minister asking that he enforce Canada's law, which specifically prohibits anyone reasonably suspected of war crimes, such as the de -treatment, uh, treatment of the detainees at Guantanamo Bay, not to mention Abu Ghraib or the black sites, from entering Canada. When Mr. Bush was forced to admit his DUI conviction, ABC News reported that before entering Canada, criminals like him are supposed to complete a rehab checklist, taking responsibility, exhibiting remorse, a change in lifestyle, and evidence of stability in his family life or employment. With Canada's government silent, protesters have already made preparations to greet Mr. Bush in Canada, reportedly building a Bush effigy, collecting shoes, and constructing a shoe cannon. Let's turn now to Gail Davidson, attorney and members of Lawyers Against the War. Much thanks for your time tonight. Good evening, Keith. Explain a Canadian law as it applies to Mr. Bush, in your opinion, if you'd be so kind. Well, Keith, as you know, there's overwhelming evidence that while President and Commander-in-Chief of the or Army, George Bush, oversaw, directed, authorized and supervised a system of torture that was long-term widespread in many countries throughout the world. Now, under Canadian law, anyone suspected of a crime like torture is inadmissible to Canada. And suspected means a little more than a suspicion and less than proof to the balance of probability. So Mr. Bush is actually inadmissible on the grounds of, of, of the torture allegations alone. Because um, the crime is torture, it gets a little more complicated under Canadian law once Mr. Bush crosses the border. Once he pr crosses the border, Canada has a legal obligation to investigate him for torture, and if there's enough evidence to launch a prosecution, then under the Convention Against Torture, Canada has to either prosecute him or extradite him to another country that's willing and able to do so. Uh, nearly so we've asked the Canadian government. Sorry, Keith. Oh, I'm sorry to have interrupted you. Uh, you've asked the Canadian government what? To first of all bar him from Canada, as the the law um, uh, allows. But five years ago, nearly, uh, Mr. Bush was was determined to have, in the formal and legal sense of the term, diplomatic immunity. Why would that not still be the case? Uh, four years ago when he came here, Lawyers Against the War actually launched a uh, criminal prosecution for um, aiding, abetting and counseling torture at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay against Mr. Bush. And that was tossed out on the grounds that as a sitting president, Mr. Bush had immunity. But as you know, um, since the Pinochet decision in London in 1998, I think it was, there is no um, immunity for former um, mm. heads of state. So Mr. Bush, um, even in England, and certainly not in Canada, has no immunity from pro for prosecution for torture. You've been quoted previously as saying that, that even if Canada does not act tomorrow, it's important to keep the pressure on. Why, why is that? What do you achieve if, uh, by keeping the pressure on? Well, uh, Keith, I see that we haven't got any option but to try and enforce the law, obviously, because uh, what would be the option? If, if we didn't enforce the law on torture, then what would um, victims of torture, the families of people tortured, what would they be doing if they couldn't um, go through the, the uh, legal and peaceful process of seeking criminal and civil remedies through the courts? Um, would they engage in counter-torture? Would they just forget about it? Um, the fact of the matter is, if we're going to look at um, stamping out torture, the torture um, created and administered by the Bush administration has to be remedied, and one of the principal remedies is criminal prosecutions of those people that are responsible. 
Well, uh, good luck tomorrow. Uh, you seem to be having perhaps more uh, procedural success than some of us in the United States are. Uh, Gail Davidson with the Canadian group Lawyers Against the War. Again, many thanks for your time. Thank you, Keith.